Um, okay, so you know already we were in American Cool this morning. Um, Anne talked to you about Malcolm X. Um, she talked to you about Angela Davis. Um, this is a fantastic exhibition. Our focus today is going to be on this individual, and I want to lead you through one of Harvard's um, Project Zero's artful thinking routines. How many of you have heard of the artful thinking routines before? Okay, excellent. So the one that I want to lead you through is Think, Puzzle, Explore. Um, and so the path of this conversation is crystal clear. It's what do you think you know about this artwork? Um, what puzzles or questions do you have about it? And then how can we explore the topic or those questions further, okay? But first, what I'd like you to do, as we've been doing this morning, is partner up and talk to your partner about what it is that you see in this portrait. All right, everyone. So based on your conversations with each other, what do we think that we know about this artwork? Absolutely. Okay, okay. How do you know it's Tony Hawk? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so label text. Before you came in today, before you came into this exhibition, had you ever seen images of him before? Yes. Okay, okay. He so, seems to be in a room that something is just very ordinary, but he's doing something extraordinary. But okay. to his family, it seems very ordinary, but to us, it's like, oh my goodness, what are you doing in our cabinets there, in our countertop? Okay, so there's this idea of contrast, right, going on in the piece. So what extraordinary thing is he doing? Skateboarding on the countertop, not breaking his hand. Okay. Do you think he's moving? No, the skateboard's flipped down, so it looks like he's resting on the tail. Balancing. Balance. Okay. Okay. What does everybody else think? It looks like he's going to go right off my counter. <laughs> he's either balancing or he's about to take off. We talked before about the what came before and what comes after. So if we were to put this portrait in motion, the next thing is, OK. OK. What else? It just seems like a, a day in the life of this family. Everybody's doing their everyday routine. OK. Well, the, the other family members are kind of stuck in the daily routine, and he's having this lot of fun. Okay, okay, so this idea of being stuck, right, the other family members versus Tony Hawk, who's doing, again, this extraordinary thing, okay? It's even faced by it, like it's an everyday occurrence okay. in their life. Okay, where do we see that unfazedness? The way she's like wiping up the counter, like, you know, like he does that every day, like there's no like shock value in what he's doing in okay. that environment. Okay. You said it seemed like the little boy's more, the novelty is more that the camera is there than that he's up on the camera. Right, right. And he is a little bit different than everybody else in this portrait, right? Why? What's different about him? He's still looking at the viewers. Right. Out into the camera. Right. With the shoes on. <laughs> okay. What else? Going back to what you said about contrast, there's a contrast between the roles of the parent and the roles of the child. Okay. Okay. In what way? It's a reversal. Whereas, you know, you would normally in that situation, you would think that the child would be the one doing the activity. Right. Where in this case, you're seeing the parent do the activity. Okay. What else do we think we know? That it's staged to an extent. Okay. That, that he does not necessarily write on his count, you know, right. write on his count. It's the fact that the photographer is there and that the picture has landed here makes it not a typical day, though it's staged to look like a typical okay. moment in their life. Okay. 
So what do you all think? It, when you look at this, do you automatically assume that it's staged? Or could this be the everyday? I assume it's staged. You assume that it was staged? Mm -hmm. Everybody else agree? I, I, I don't think it was staged. <laughs> I hope okay. Tony Hawk is like that. I mean, I'm shocked <laughs> to see his little family there. Mm -hmm. So I hope he's skinny. <laughs> But I think it does bring up two important points. One is the photographer is there, so why, right? And then two, the portrait is here, and so why? Okay. What else? What struck you as you looked at the piece? Yeah. If you go, it is staged. I mean, when I look at him, it's like he's, you know, way larger than everyone else. And mm -hmm. if you look, I mean, the thing that always hits me when I look at this is that the vent over his head. It makes him look like like an angel or a, you know, like it's, and then he has his arms spread out like that. So there's the whole kind of cat like I know, symbolism. Okay. <laughs> I would see that thing over his head and then him being up like that. Okay. Have our arms out um, come to symbolize anything else? Flying. 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 Okay. Of the domestic restraint. Okay. Okay, so breaking free of the domestic restraint, which we certainly see, right, in this piece. I feel disappointed in the stage because I feel like portraits <laughs> just tell you something about the person. Right. And so let's say I'm just an average, like, I came in and never occurred to me. So you come in and I'm like, look at Tony Hawk's life, but it's not a true picture. And it makes me feel disappointed. Okay. Is that the act of photography? Once you are trying to capture something, you automatically change it? I don't know, like, my, all my notions have been challenged because I really thought when I looked at a picture, I'm really seeing it into a person's life and now I'm realizing I'm not kind of... It's a photographer taking an artistic license on right. something that might happen but might not happen. And then I think maybe it shouldn't be a portrait gallery. It's an artistic <laughs> license. Uh, <laughs> but I guess I'm just fine. Okay. I noticed some of the... Um, stylistic things yeah. dated a little bit. You know, the white appliances, the big okay. microwave, um, you know, the, the kitchen's kind of small, and uh, it just, it looks like maybe a typical kitchen might have looked like 20 years ago. So okay. the only question is, is that really just Right. Well, yeah, so that's a good question. Or is this... He has a speed empire, right? Right. So would he really have a kitchen like that? That's a good question. Right. So it's like... Because I'm thinking more ordinary. Because I can be honest. I got white appliances. Like that. I wish my kitchen was that big. So I can, I can just the, I can just the opposite impression. That it's not so much dated. Is that they just kind of be part of suburbia. Instead of being a superstar. Yeah. Or, or like a counterculture. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on what point of this. The arc of the skating empire that was taken. Right. Maybe since it's on to the bigger But if you go back to him, I mean, we are in the cool thing, right? And if you're reading some of the labels, it was like cool as being different. And so he is super rich, not right. looking like you're rich. And, you know, like that could be considered cool, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I'm a skateboarder and I'm not, you know, although we all know we have tons of money, but most right. <laughs> skateboarders. So I think that we've definitely, we moved on to some puzzles. Um, and a couple of the things that I heard were, when was this portrait created? And I think that that will help us determine um, why the kitchen looks as it does. Um, Another question is, is this his kitchen, right? That's a big question. Um, because if we go back to this idea of whether or not this portrait is staged, right, maybe, okay. What other questions do we have? Puzzles. Are there really his kids and family? <laughs> family. Is that his family, family. right? <laughs> okay. That's a good one, it's a big one. What else? What was the photographs 
uh, original use? Was it for a magazine that depicted an article about him? Was it for a promotion for his skating line? Was it you know, so the, the intent of the photographer and the intent of the photograph? Right, we've been talking a lot about backstory. Um, and so what's the purpose of the photograph? Where was it before it was here? What else? Other questions? Other puzzles? I wonder if you have the idea for the big stage, for the stages. Did Tony decide I'm going to be up on the counter, or you know, was that the photographer's idea? Mm -hmm. Who really worked out the placement of all the players in the photograph? Okay. okay. So, along with um, setting, if we're actually in his home, it's set up, right? Who made the decisions that resulted in the photograph that we see? Other puzzles? Well, for me, nobody looks happy, really. I mean, he, because he's on a skateboard, looks like he's having fun, but nobody right. else does. So, is that really, if this is his family, is that really what it's like? I mean, you know, is everybody miserable or? <laughs> Right, because, I mean, let's, let's just very quickly take the three other individuals, individual by individual, okay? We've got this young boy, what's he doing? Okay, he's eating, possibly breakfast. Okay, what else about him stands out, other than the fact, like we mentioned before, that he's staring at us? Anything else stand out? Okay, totally ignoring his dad, okay? Or, so to me, he doesn't look like he thinks his dad is cool. Okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> every other kid. What else could he be thinking? I mean, every other kid ignoring his parent, but could he also be thinking that this is an everyday occurrence in my house and, okay, it is what it is? That he's not so cool. That he's not so cool. Just, just Okay. Karen. Okay. Did if your mother's not paying attention to him, the father's not paying attention to him, like at that age, I feel like someone should be paying attention to him. Okay. So we have this sense of neglect that he's being neglected. Okay. Karen, were you going to add something? I say he has no affect on his face. He's like. Okay. He's just. He's there, right? Okay. Let's talk about the mom. Why is your <laughs> okay, so it's about, um, it, we talk about setting, but it's also about the other small details, right? What is she doing? Okay. Right. It's an awful lot, isn't it? The dishwasher is open, and the door isn't just open. Both of the sliders are out, but she's not doing anything with the dishwasher. She's wiping off the counter. And then who is she holding? A baby, okay? And do you think that the other son has made his own meal? No, the, the mom has probably made that too. So she is a multitasking, right? But what is our other male figure doing? Not helping. <laughs> He's skateboarding, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Right? OK. And so this baby, what's going on? It's heavy. OK. <laughs> looks heavy. OK. <laughs> sort of just there, right? OK. What other questions? I have a question like, why is it black and white as opposed to color, or is it just black and white because of the gallery space? No, I think that, that that's a valid question. Why did the artist create this portrait in black and white versus color? What would be the point of it, right? It goes back to the idea of purpose. And then there, somebody else was saying something over here. I was wondering if the mother's angry. She looks angry to me, but I don't know if I'm just reading that into it. Okay. So a maybe a little bit of anger on her face. How else could we read it? Tired. Tired. Okay, fed up and resigned. Okay. Okay. Be a very traditional 
picture in the sense the mom's the homemaker and dad makes the money. And he's showing how he makes the money by skateboarding in the middle of the kitchen. He brings home the bacon, she fries it up and serves it to the kids sitting on the chair. You know, sort of that 1950s suburban, we each have our roles, roles. and they're going to stay to them. But his role is a little bit, his money making <laughs> idea is a little bit different than the norm. Right. Exactly. Which could also be why it's in black and white, because that makes it more mm -hmm. retro. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. And okay. more style. Right. We don't typically see that hairstyle so much anymore. Um, we used to certainly a lot. I guess the question is when, right? Okay. Like exercise and patience and tolerance, and you know, the, the other members of the family have gotten to the point where it's okay. That's just dad being dad. Okay. And that's also, interesting. And I also thought the the little boy on the chair, he might be thinking. Yeah, you think my dad's cool? You should see what I can do on board. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another thing that just came to me is it's like, it could be like, have the roles really changed that much? I mean, he's doing a really different way of raising money or supporting a family. Right. But then they're all still kind of doing the same thing that, right. you know, everybody used to do. So she's still cleaning the house and taking care of the kids while he's working. But, you know, even, and it's, has there been progress? <laughs> and it's funny to springboard, to springboard what you just said. When, when listening to you, it's almost like the focus is now not him. It's the family. Like he's not the center of the picture. It's the family and how they're reacting to it. So he's sort of been removed from it. And now we're all thinking not about him, who's the cool one, but about the family around him. So the more we talk about it, the more the they become a central focus. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. and less him. Okay. How cool would your family have to be to tolerate yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask my wife when I get <laughs> he's, he's celebrated around the world and he, has, he is what he is because he's had an audience. But there in his home, oh, he has an audience. Okay. <laughs> okay. So one of the big components of Common Core, right, is this idea of research. How do we find out the answers to the questions that we have? So outside of the label text, how do we find out these answers to all of your puzzles, to all of your questions? You could try to uh, look for images of his family. Okay. A search. Okay, are they real or not, right? Okay. What else? It's a great use of bringing technology in the classroom at the high school level. We're constantly arguing about, go your phone, stop texting. But this is a great opportunity to utilize technology in the classroom. As soon as these questions come up, take out your smartphones. Let's see how we, let's start working together and find out the answers right there in class. So we are all still on task focused on what we're trying to look up. Right, right. And I think it's a really great question to ask how accessible would the information be if they could look for it right away, right? Just like we did today, you could look up a photographer and see what their style is and do they usually do setups or, you know, like, and see, like, the thing we did today where we compared, right. you know, what he had done before to... Right, that conversation yeah. extender yeah. to think about process um, and style um, of portrait, certainly. Could see if there was like an accompanying article or something that went with this. Somebody asked, like, what was the purpose of this? Or okay. Maybe the photographer even spoke about it. Okay. Somewhere. Okay. Anything else? I wonder what the brand is on his shirt. Is that one of these brands? I can't see it well enough. Right. Know, or is he, you know, in that shot to promote somebody else's gear? Is he advertising? Okay, so it gets back to, again to the idea of purpose, right? Any other ways to explore the puzzles? Ask an expert. Ask an expert. <laughs> Would that be me? <laughs> well, lucky for all of you. <laughs> um, I can tell you that this photograph was created for the New Yorker. Okay, so if you look, right, um, take a look at the title. Do you remember what we talked about? The positioning of his arms? The Birdman. Tony Hawk's nickname is the Birdman. 
okay? But what I want to point out, this was a profile piece that was done in The New Yorker in 1999, okay? So knowing the date of the portrait, does that help or hinder our conversation about when, kitchen, all of that? Hairstyle, does that? Right, it was that year that he did his first 900, which is what, three and a half spins, okay? But what I really wanna tell you is the um, caption for the photograph. The Hawks at home, the skateboarder is a master of gravity defying maneuvers. Does that caption or, how, or what questions did we have previously? How are those questions answered by that caption? So, so he's balancing. Okay, so balancing. Okay, again, if you look closely, we thought maybe he was in movement, but if we look again, that front of the skateboard is up, so there's, there's a balance going on, okay? What else is answered by the caption? It is his family. It is his family. Right? The hawks at home. Anything else? That he has to balance not only his skateboard, but he has to balance all the aspects of his life. Right, right, right. So it's not just literally balancing, right? It's everything. Yes, she's balancing too. <laughs> Absolutely. Figure out the year 1999. I have no idea how old Tony Hawk is or when he was born. You can figure out how old he is. Is that a young man's family versus an older man's family where you might have a different relationship with your kids and different enthusiasm with your kids, different energy? Right, exactly, exactly. Any final thoughts on this piece? Thoughts on Think Puzzle Explore? How you could use it, if you would use it? No matter what we're doing, drive home to my kids, you've got to be a keen-eyed observer. And that's mm -hmm. the term I use, keen-eyed observer, keen-eyed right. observer. You know, what can you notice that nobody else sees? How can you bring the rest of the classroom into what you are seeing, and then also see what everybody else is seeing to improve your own skills? And it's something that you use across the different subject areas. Mm -hmm. yep. It's not just in art. It's not just in, you know, one subject. Right, right. I and art detective. Yes. Yeah, and we like to use that terminology a lot, this idea of being a portrait detective, right? Because the clues are what help us read the object. Um, and thinking about Think Puzzle Explore, this idea of deeper inquiry. You know, scaffolding your questions and going deeper and deeper, and it's not just about that surface layer, but it's about all the layers that are below it. Right, so social studies, we're always trying to get to, how do we know what we know? Right. About history. A technique like this is going to bring that home too, and you know, it's easily adaptable and transferable. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. There is a, a, a little bit of tension though between the idea of looking at observer, like what do I see mm -hmm. before what do I think? Right. Okay, whereas think puzzle explorer goes right into analysis almost, yeah. and, and um, there can be some danger in that. In that people start reading into things that aren't really there. Right, right. right. So I think it's something to, to use carefully. And that's what, so we at the Portrait Gallery have used See, Think, Wonder a lot, and I'm sure that you all have heard of that as well. And so when I do Think, Puzzle, Explore, I like to have everybody partner up first and talk about what it is that they see. Because it goes back to what we talked about at George Washington, which is that we first need to observe before we can interpret. Because you're right. I mean, if we haven't made those visual observations, it is a little bit dangerous to move right into interpretation and to make assumptions. In see, think, wonder, what is the difference between think and wonder? I've never heard of it. So it's um, what do I see, what do I think about what do I see, and then what do I wonder about? So that's the question. Right, so it basically, see, think, wonder, um, is like Think Puzzle Explore, but what Explore does 
is it takes that one step further. How are you going to research? You know, how are you going to find the answers? See, think, wonder stops at your questions. lecture base yeah. and to talk about the end of World War II instead of ending it with a lecture, you know, having a 45 minute discussion of let's say the man and the woman kissing in Times Square yeah. and have the kids, what's going on and, and then talk about it and then for them exploring, well let's now look at the end of the war. Yeah. When did it happen? When is this picture taken? So I think it's a great thing to bring into a social studies classroom when you're getting away from content knowledge right. to skill based, which is so much more important in real life application. Exactly, exactly. Is there any legal reason we can't have four steps? <laughs> so when you look on their site, <laughs> um, no, they just have it as see, think, wander, and think, puzzle, explore think is too, separate. Is yeah. Like Library of Congress has a, a similar type of. Yes, thing. yeah, the, their analysis. analysis. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. Any closing thoughts before we move on? Excellent, thank you.